you are into movie movie related discussions, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am the Wiz! And this is usually the day where me and Kim review a movie, but Kim is on vacation to Arizona, so she is not here today. We'll be reviewing a movie next week, but I thought today I would review the 1952 movie The Quiet Man, starring John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara, directed by John Ford. Why did I choose this movie? Well, I'm going to be quite honest with you. I didn't know what to choose, and I had dinner with my parents one night, and I was like, hey, guys, what's your favorite movie? <laughs> that's, that's essentially how I chose this. And uh, my mom looked at me like, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> And my dad was like, The Quiet Man. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, I heard The Quiet Man. I was like, oh, right. John Wayne and John Ford. Right. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> my dad is a big John Wayne fan, of course. So when he chose The Quiet Man, I was like, okay. So horses, cowboys, got it. And when I went to watch it, I was like, oh, that's not this movie at all. So I was actually kind of surprised. Why don't I get into the review of The Quiet Man starring... John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara, directed by John Ford. So let me get into the plot real quick. John Wayne plays a retired bo American boxer who goes back to Ireland to his homeland to reclaim his home in his family's country that they were originated from. And when he's there, he meets Mary-Kate Donaher, played by Maureen O'Hara, and they strike up a romance. And that is the main plot of the film, it goes into some different directions, but that's essentially the, the movie here. Overall, I liked the film. I thought it was cute. I thought it was funny in certain spots. I, I actually was surprised by how funny it was because of anything, John Ford is not a comedic director. He actually takes his art pretty seriously. We're talking about movies like The Searchers and Stagecoach and stuff like that. So I was surprised that it was a comedy and I was surprised it actually worked pretty well in this movie. Now I want to point out, uh, we'll get to writing right now. I want to point out, if you don't like movies with misogyny or things that you would find to be uh, misogynistic in a certain aspect, y you might want to avoid this film. John Wayne's character, Sean, does some kind of screwed up things but it, i guess because it was set in the 20s it was not f as frowned upon as it would be now so if you are watching this and you don't like let's say i don't know maureen o'hara being manhandled or forcibly kissed or uh <laughs> you know stuff like that m maybe you might want to skip it bear that in mind it is a film of its time so if you are bothered by that you may want to skip this one. I thought this was a cute movie. It's very, it is a sweet movie in its own subversive way. I think the romance between uh, Sean Thornton and Mary Kate was actually pretty good. But again, it's got a strange vibe to it. At first, it kind of looks like Mary Kate is stalking <laughs> Sean in the beginning of the movie. And then as the courtship happens, it starts to get a little strange. Well, not really. Uh, not strange is the word I'm looking for, but it's definitely different from what I'm used to in most romance films uh, of this type. And then there are certain cultural things in this movie that makes it very different than other romance films that I thought was actually pretty interesting. And I liked the way they went about this. I will get into that in spoilers. Just to say that it, I found that aspect incredibly interesting when that started going on directing i think this is a beautiful looking movie john ford's direction is really good the cinematography is excellent the way the film looks it, it is a color movie from the 50s so it has that certain technicolor feel but it's, it's still gorgeous looking to look at the the sets and the outdoors and there are some scenes where it, it's obviously on a green screen <laughs> but uh it, it was actually i thought shot very well in, in this movie i i really enjoyed the the look uh, and the sense of place this movie had like the the, the bars the the different cottages uh, like i really liked how this film looked and i'll get into performances right now i'm actually surprised how much i like john wayne in this i like john wayne to a certain extent uh, of course with his cowboy epics I, I do like him in those but whenever he does something outside of that it's like ooh, <laughs> it's like i don't know about that Oh, I, the, the prime example will always be the movie where he played Genghis Khan. 
Like, that would be the one where I'm like, oh, that was a bad move. This worked. He was not only able to be charming, but he was also able to be intimidating as well. And I've never seen that charming side of him where I could actually believe a woman would actually fall for him without rolling their eyes. So I definitely enjoyed John Wayne's performance in this, but to me, Maureen O'Hara, I think, was the best performance in this movie. She's not only great as like a love interest, but the flashes of personality that the character has, the, the temper, the independent spirit, I think she portrayed that character really well. It's why I liked that character a lot more as the movie started going on. So I really like her character and how she performed that character. All right, so let's get into spoilers for The Quiet Man, the 1952 romantic comedy drama directed by John Ford. If you have not seen it, you can come back when you are ready, and we will get into spoilers in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The main plot is Sean courting or trying to date and marry Mary Kate. But the thing is, that settles itself before the first hour is over. When it is found out that he wants to date Mary Kate and the brother declines it, they they have this subplot where they're trying to trick the brother into thinking that he's after the woman that the brother wants. That starts a conspiracy that is pretty fun, but it is only it's, it resolves itself in about 10, 15 minutes. And then the brother, which is, I guess, a custom at the time with Irish women, Sean need to get the permission of the brother to date Mary Kate. So when they finally get that permission, they go into a, a courtship thing where someone has to be there at all times while they're Courting, which I don't think I've ever heard of this. I don't know if it's true. It probably is true. I, I will I will not deny that it probably is true. But I, I thought that was like, this is weird. <laughs> okay, I'm into it. I'm, I'll buy it. Cool. Th- those differences in this movie, I think, give it the added flavor that I, I really appreciate in the movie. Like I, I thought that this dynamic of having to go through this uh, cultural thing that uh, me as an American have no frame of reference on, I thought was actually what made it more interesting as I was watching it. So I actually really liked that aspect of the film. But what happens is they eventually get married within the hour, the next hour of the film. But what happens is that the brother is expecting to be with that woman that he wanted, and he finally realized it was all ruse so Sean can marry Mary Kate. And what happens is the marriage goes through, but the possessions that the sister has and her dowry did not come with her. And the next hour is basically Sean trying to have a domestic life with Mary Kate while she's supremely unhappy with the fact that she doesn't have her dowry or her possessions, which is something that she covets and desires for good reasons. That becomes the main drama of the movie in the second half, where Sean and Mary Kate are squabbling because she wanted to get married, but she wanted her stuff to come with her, and now she has nothing of her own. I think that was actually pretty good. I actually liked that aspect of the film and the fact that it added more drama into it that I wasn't expecting. Th- this film really became less of a drama, a romantic drama at that point, and more of a fish out of water where Dawn had to realize that the customs are very different from what he's used to. And it was actually pretty entertaining in that aspect. And it's why I I, I think in in this type of movie, I think it wouldn't have worked as well, but because I think the more cultural aspects that he is just unfamiliar with and his reaction and how he dealt with those things, I think were the most interesting parts of this film. And then at the end, uh, there was the... <laughs> There was the entertaining, if not comical, fight that happens at the end between Sean and his brother-in-law, and I thought that was just pretty entertaining. I, I thought the the fact that they had to add the added drama with Sean and him killing a man in the ring. He was a boxer before he came back, so it was when he retired. The reason why he retires because he killed his last opponent in the ring. I think was a little unnecessary but it it didn't hurt the film too much not really not at all i I guess it was it's just to add a little more drama to not make sean seem 
much more controlling than he was. It was to give him some more pathos, but I just don't think it really succeeded that well. It didn't it didn't exactly distract, but I don't think it actually worked the way the filmmaker really wanted it to. So that that would be my one small problem with that. But yeah, the story goes into two different buckets and both are very entertaining. I actually really like I just like the charm of the film. That, that's I think that's the thing that I like the most. The film is really charming. Does it explain stereotypes? Yes. Everyone's a drunk. Everyone <laughs> talks a certain way. There's a bunch of redheads. There's a bunch of brawlers. Like, yeah, it, it's stereotypical to the max. Yes, I will uh, definitely uh, admit to that. But I still think it's a very charming film, and I think it's O'Hara and Wayne that really make this film as good as it is. Okay, so let's get into my final thoughts of The Quiet Man. I enjoyed this film. I thought it was pretty, it was actually very good. It's not one of my favorite romantic comedy dramas, but I, I definitely get why people love this film and they celebrate it. Yeah, so I enjoyed this film. I think Maureen O'Hara had the best performance of the film. I really liked her as Mary Kate. John Wayne was good. I, I liked John Wayne in it, but he was... You know, John Wayne. When I found out that this film was in Ireland, I was like, oh no, is he, is he going to try an Irish accent? And thank God he didn't. That would have been terrible. The direction and the look of the film is fantastic. The cinematography is excellent. I think both the cinematography and John Ford got Oscars for this movie specifically. And I can understand why it was done really well. I like how the story turned out. I like how the the plot shifts in a certain way and it makes it even more entertaining and more interesting as the time goes. I also like the, the, the other characters, the ancillary characters in this movie. I thought it was, I thought it was honestly a very fun movie and it was very enjoyable. And if you aren't turned off by some of the things that John Wayne's character does in this film, I think if you like romantic comedies, you would really enjoy this I'm going to give this three and a half out of five stars. I think this is a very enjoyable movie. I definitely liked it. It showed a different side of John Ford that I wasn't aware actually existed. So I was very happy with this film. I actually really enjoyed it. A touch too long, but it's not like I, I'm not complaining too much. But I think this is a very enjoyable and lovely film. Bearing in mind you don't mind some of the questionable things. Three and a half stars out of five for me for The Quiet Man. Definitely check it out if you want.